Hello, everybody. My name is Zina Bislam, and I'm the Relations Manager, Academia Network at UNO Center. Uh, welcome to the lecture 34, 30, uh, Welcome to the thirty-first lecture of our YSPC Web Lecture Series. Today's lecture is very special. We have with us five exceptional academics from five different universities who will share about their work today. Um, it's a great opportunity for our newer YSBCs to learn, so please make full use of this opportunity. So uh, with that, we start today's session uh, with some introductions of our speakers and moderator. As you know, today's topic of conversation is on YSBC collaborations. And for that, we have with us our moderator, Professor Benedict Tavignon, who is an affiliate professor of strategy at HEC Paris, France. She's the executive director of the Society and Organization Institute, which aims to develop a new way of thinking about the role of business and society, whether through research or teaching. Professor Benedict created the HEC Paris Master of Science and Sustainable Development and also co-founded the HEC Chair Social Business Enterprise and Poverty. Our speaker panel today consists of Professor Cam Donaldson, who is the UNOS Chair and Distinguished Professor of Health Economics at Glasgow Caledonian University, where he founded the UNOS Center for Social Business and Health, and also served as the, the Pro Vice Chancellor of Research from 2016 to 2021. We also have with us Professor Anastasia Kosarenko. Uh, she's an Associate Professor of Economics at Montpellier Business School. Uh, her current research is focused on microfinance with special attention to regulation, non-financial services, subsidization, discrimination, and gender from theoretical and empirical perspectives. She holds the Social and Sustainable Finance Chair at Montpellier Business School. We also have Professor Teresa Moniao, uh, who is the professor at Pompey Faber University, Department of Economics and Business in the Financial and Accounting Division, uh, Deputy Dean in the Economics and Business Faculty since 2011 also. She represents the university in the social business city of Barcelona, Spain. And finally, we have with us our very own Enrico Testi, who managed the ARCO Action Research for Co-Development um, Research since 2009, and also the UNO Social Business Center at the University of Florence in Italy since 2011. With 10 years of experience in research and consulting, both in Italy and abroad, his areas of expertise include social business, enterprise, social enterprise monitoring and evaluation, impact evaluation, and local development. So today's lecture is going to be a great one with so many talented ac academics and with that I let's begin today's session with some welcoming words from Professor Yunus. Uh, Professor Yunus. Thank you Zinato. Thank you very much for uh, welcoming me and uh, welcoming all the uh, speakers today. Uh, this is a very unusual uh, lecture series uh, uh, episode because this is not the, within the standard format that we usually follow that uh, there'll be one speaker and one moderator. Uh, this time we, we dare to bring a very top people to put their heads together to tackle a very special subject, uh, collaboration. Collaboration in, among the YSBCs. Uh, here on the screen, as uh, Zidat was introducing, if you recall, we have uh, the top cities in Europe, uh, one uh, Paris and the uh, Barcelona and uh, um, uh, Glasgow, uh, Florence, uh, am I missing somebody? It's, uh, so we have all these uh, universities together and uh, the universities from uh, top universities there to discuss how collaboration is possible. Uh, collaboration in many fronts, that's uh, one thing, it's a very uh, short time to discuss all that but we lay down the foundation of the discussion, framework of the discussion, so that we can continue. Uh, because this is the time we have to really put our uh, talent together to make things moving. So this is where we are at this moment, how to make things happen. Uh, maybe research in a traditional sense, research in action research sense, uh, research in how to make our programs more stronger, like we have the competitions uh, all the time. We are announcing competition, one competition, then another competition. How to make these competitions useful? There's a now social business design competition going on uh, with a price tag of uh, $10,000. Winner will get $10,000. And then there's a fiction uh, uh, design. You design a fiction, uh, social business fiction. Uh, for that also, 
a ten thousand uh, dollar prize money waiting. So how to make this e really useful? Excite young people to do that. So this is one. Not only research in a conventional sense, is it give ideas of research. Another one. Uh, uh, always, I think about it: how to use uh, our resources within the university campuses and academic among the academicians. How to create a social business pharmaceutical company? We are interested in it. And guide us, help us. How to do that? Do a good job when we are doing a pharmaceutical industry. Finance is not a problem. We can mobilize the fund, whatever fund is needed. That, so that's off the table. That's not your concern. Concern is how to make it a good quality, good quality. Uh, pharmaceutical company, how to connect with really resourceful persons who can design design a pharmaceutical company, who can even take undertake the running of the, this. Uh, this is all, all payment based. This is nothing free. Nothing. But if somebody comes in as a volunteer, most welcome. But we, uh, this is a serious business, social business, pharmaceutical in, uh, business. We want to set up in Bangladesh. And so this is one of the subjects to guide us uh, since you have all the resources uh, access to the resources, uh, who will be the consulting organization as a person or an organization who can help us in doing that. So there are varieties of things uh, which can be come, which can bring into the research idea. How to fund, uh, find the funding for the research? That's another thing issue that we can discuss. Not all the issues can be discussed today, but I'm just opening it so that we can occasionally meet and see how far we have moved. So I'm very happy to uh, have you with us and uh, uh, our audience would be very happy to listen to you. And uh, now the floor is uh, yours. Benedict, please take it from here. Thank you, Professor. Hello, everybody. Nice to be with you uh, this afternoon. Um, so yes, if we, I think we, if we look at the today's uh, challenges that you shortly mentioned, Professor, like, uh, you know, urgent challenges uh, such as uh, climate change, biodiversity depletion, uh, rising inequalities, and and so many challenges that we know. Uh, we know that we, we need new coalitions of actors. And so actors, uh, you know, coming from uh, civil society, from public uh, institutions, from private sector, we also need academics. Um, and academics need to be part of the solution uh, to, as uh, companies have to be part of the solutions as well. So uh, rather than part of the problem as it has been the case sometimes. So um, the issue here is how to build also coalitions of academics and of academics uh, and uh, the other stakeholders and how to accelerate in a way the transition to a more sustainable world. Um, and to scaling up also social businesses that will solve the problems. So we are happy to, to, to welcome all the, our guest speakers. And uh, the idea probably here is to start with uh, what's existing already, what's, uh, what's your experience in your different universities of these collaborations, what have you done already in terms of research, on, uh, in terms of uh, teaching and action, um, what's your experience of collaborations on these three pillars? Uh, and then we uh, go back to, we'll have some step back on, on, on maybe the difficulties sometimes, the, the barriers, and, and we we'll look after uh, at what uh, could be done to accelerate, to move ahead and, and develop these collaborations in order to, to make a difference uh, and have a big impact. So maybe I could start with you, uh, Dr. Teresa. So could you could you share maybe your experience on the collaborations with the YSBCs and what you've been doing in terms of research uh, or uh, action research and education, for example? Yes, uh, thank you, Benedict. And thank you to the organization to give me the opportunity to participate in this session. I think that organizing this kind of sessions are very interesting and very important. Um, the, the experience that we have in the UPF collaborating with other teams and collaborating in, in international teams are very um, important and very positive. And I think that uh, to guarantee that the, the, the project will uh, success, it is necessary to have um, a, a good leader. 
And also it is necessary to define clearly the aim of the project. And everyone in the, in the team has to know um, the, the aim of the project and, and has to understand the, the aim of the project. And also another thing that is important in order to, to have um, success uh, between the international collaboration, it is really important that everyone knows his or her role in, in, in the team. Also, there are other kind of things that are interesting in order to, to be successful in the, in the team, like to guarantee the balanced diversity, for example, uh, diversity of knowledge, diversity of gender or diversity in cultures, because if in the team participate different cultures, it is good for, for, for the project. And sometimes we have problems with the resources. Uh, I think that um, is the most important problem when we have an international collaboration. And mm, nowadays, another problem, I think that is the COVID situation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Teresa. Maybe uh, I'd like to leave the floor actually to, to Professor Cam. So Cam, could you tell us more about what actually collaborations can mean and uh, what, what's your experience on that? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Benny. And, and, and thanks to the organizers for bringing this, this panel together and uh, allowing me to, to be a, a part of it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to the next uh, 30 or 40 minutes or so. I, I mean, I think universities and academic networks are ideal places to foster collaboration. I think the, you know, the, the university sector, I think, thrives on, for example, uh, interdisciplinary collaboration. And I think many of our centres in the network uh, actually embody that. Um, I also think that the, uh, the, a great strength of, of our YSBCs is their ability to collaborate with the sector uh, itself. So the sector here, of course, being uh, the, the, the social business sector. And I, I think also maybe what we'll end up discussing uh, over the next little while is, is perhaps how people think uh, about collaboration more traditionally, which is how can we do that not only within regions, but uh, across regions and, and globally. That's probably where uh, one of the main uh, challenges um, lies. I think in our centre, uh, our YSBC at Glasgow Caledonia, I think we, we could not have thrived and, and grown from three people uh, on our starting date to uh, now having a centre comprising at any one time, 30 to 40 uh, people, depending on the projects that exist. We could not have thrived in that way without uh, national and international collaboration. So a, a, a great example of that is a, an early project that we worked on with Enrico and colleagues at, at Florence and about 10 other universities around Europe, which tried to look at the, uh, the ecosystem for social business in Europe. So what... what which of these, what lessons can we draw from different countries that allow social business to, to flourish more or less, depending on uh, what those characteristics were? That's ideal in terms of the kind of cross of international collaboration and learning uh, that, that can go on. Um, I think in parallel with our own centre, we have seen huge growth in the YSBC network itself. So uh, I think I saw number 98 uh, YSBCs in the uh, introdu introductory slides. This is just fantastic. Again, if you go back to 2010, uh, we uh, had a small gathering of academics in a, in, in a room at, at the, um, at the uh, Social Business Summit in Wolfsburg in, in, in Germany. And so the growth has been phenomenal. I think that network has some unique characteristics, which again, I think, provide a superb basis for fostering collaboration and meeting those challenges that Professor Eunice set out around things like 
developing a, a pharmaceutical uh, company uh, on, on social business principles. Uh, and those unique characteristics are how open we are as a network to people coming in from different uh, disciplines, uh, you know, right through from humanities, business schools, through to people in more laboratory-based sciences who are interested in, uh, in social business, uh, from design thinkers in art schools uh, around Europe, etc. That, that's, that's one of our really interesting and unique uh, characteristics. And has already been mentioned, we're interested as, as, a, as a network in, and our conferences in action, teaching, as well as research. So I think we have actually put in place a, a really good basis uh, on which to have this conversation about um, collaboration uh, going forward. Thank you very much, uh, Cam. Anastasia, maybe you would like to, to share with us your, your experience at uh, Montpellier Business School and working with other uh, YSBCs. Yes, thank you, Benedict. Thank you all for organizing this meeting. It's a pleasure for me to be in this, to participate in this panel. So I completely agree with, uh, with what has been said by Theresa and Kem, and maybe to add something to what Theresa was saying in terms of what makes a collaboration successful. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also add having a clear timeline. So for instance, we have a common project here, the four um, UNUS uh, social business centers here. We have a project which is called SEVERE, which stands for social enterprise through virtual environments and remote entrepreneurship. And so it started in August 2020. And uh, I think this, uh, the, uh, what make, makes this uh, project su successful uh, beyond uh, a very good leader, which is the Glasgow U University, is that we had a very clear timeline from the beginning. So it's a project which lasts for three years. And from the beginning, we knew that we will start with uh, an opening event, then uh, a summer school for the students, then a winter school, and so on and so far. So having this clear timeline, I think, made it really uh, helpful uh, to have this general view of the project to make it successful. Uh, the other thing uh, which makes this project successful, in my opinion, is that we have, uh, thanks to this clear timeline, we also have regular meetings which create a commitment for uh, all the participants. Um, so this is, these are the two other features. So just to mention about SEVERE that we have six uh, academic institutions from Europe, the four uh, union social business centers, which we have here today, and plus Aveiro University from Portugal um, and the Dublin City University. Uh, so uh, this project, the particularity of this project is that it's really focused on the students. It's a pedagogical project for students and uh, each of the six universities has selected 10 students to participate in this project who um, uh, work together for three years to create social businesses uh, to um, uh, provide solutions to the social problems. Um, and uh, as of today, we have nine projects which have de been developed. Uh, and in each of these nine projects, we have students from the six universities. So it's indeed transnational projects. And the different topics, just to give you an example, so that you have uh, an idea of the topics which uh, the, on which the students are working on, it's health, environment, homelessness, uh, food waste, social finance, and so on and so far. Thank you so much. Um, is there a link with the three zero clubs? So what's, can you explain is the relationship between this, this initiative and the three zero clubs? Yes, uh, that's a very good question. So indeed, we also have a French academic network of the three uh, zero clubs and uh, also the general initiatives of the three zero uh, clubs. So uh, today there is no direct link, but I think tomorrow indeed that's the purpose, to have students from all the, over the world, from uh, different universities collaborate together and work on social businesses internationally. And actually um, the COVID crisis, uh, I didn't mention that, but the COVID crisis uh, was uh, actually an opportunity for us to create this initiative to uh, 
create the means for students to collaborate uh, together and also uh, some incubators to help them and support them in the creation of their students. So today there is no direct link, but the idea is that tomorrow indeed it could transform more generally um, in an international initiative. Yes. Thank you very much. And Nico, uh, so you've, you've been very proactive uh, on these collaborations as mentioned already. What would be your, uh, how, What's your experience on that? And uh, what are the key factors of success as we've already started to look at the key factors of success of this kind of collaborations? Yeah. Uh, th thank you, Benedict. Um, as you said, we have already uh, some experience in collaborating with other YSPCs. Of course, with Glasgow Caledonian, they are our uh, long lasting partner in many uh, adventures and projects. Um, I, I will just mention some other partnerships uh, we are having at the moment. Uh, we have a joint research with the Union Social Business Center at the Bethlehem University in Palestine. Actually, we are doing research on social enterprises and uh, possibilities for social businesses in Palestine, but it's not just research. Actually, we are trying also to do some uh, lobbying at with policymakers and try to see if we can actually uh, promote social business more in Palestine. Then we have a collaboration with National State University uh, of Taiwan uh, for the social businesses in Taiwan. So with Professor Chen, uh, we exchange uh, ideas and uh, our experiences with the social business cities. So actually we have this uh, collaboration and now we are doing, we will do some interviews to uh, social businesses in Taiwan to check how actually the social business city is going on. Uh, we have also long lasting relation with Barcelona. Uh, uh, they had the social business city program. Now they have the Union Social Business Center that gathers uh, and coordinates uh, somehow the activities of different universities. So of course. Uh, for us, it's quite easy every time there is a European call to contact Barcelona and we know that they will always answer and vice versa. You know? And then, uh, of course, we are in the severe project uh, where Anastasia already talked about it. Uh, we also had, I would call it collaboration, even though it's uh, maybe it's not the same as collaboration on projects, but with the UNO Center in Cantabria, they had a special issue on social enterprises uh, and social business. So we actually took part to it. Uh, and I had the honor of publishing a paper with Professor Yunus and Professor Bijeri in their special issue. So this is just to say, mention the different kinds of collaboration that one can have. Um, so what are the success factors? Uh, of course, I, I, I wouldn't say there is size fit all. Uh, however, I think that beginning a relation uh, and work uh, systematically to uh, try to find opportunities together is a uh, is way to have success because maybe you fail two, one, two, three times, but then maybe you are successful. So. Uh, for example, the, the project uh, Cam uh, was mentioning before the big one financed by European Commission, uh, it wasn't the first attempt. We didn't win it in the first attempt. So we have to try and fail together many times before succeeding. Uh, but this is also connected, I would say, to incentives uh, in the different universities because we all the centers are not all the same. So some of them might focus more on papers, writing papers, doing academic research, while others might be a bit more practical. This is our case, for example. So I think it's very important to really know each other and which are our capabilities, our also interests, not only academic ones, but also on what kind of projects you are willing to do, because maybe not all you know, centers are happy of creating uh, projects with students because it's a waste of time, academically speaking. You know? So um, I think work, starting to work together is one step. The other step is also maybe we should create some very focused events on, for example, grant opportunities or other opportunities where we all take part and discuss on that 
precise opportunity. So it's more focused and more efficient. Mm. Thank you very much. I think, uh, yeah, so we've already raised, you have already raised uh, quite a few key factors of success of these collaborations, like uh, you know, being all clear about the aim of the project, clear about the, uh, the timeline, with, uh, you know, regular meetings, as you said, you know, trying and trying again. And uh, also, yes, being clear with the different um, objectives and constraints, probably, of the different institutions. And uh, as you said, focused uh, meetings. I think it's very interesting. So what would be for you the, the main barriers today for you know, fostering these collaborations? What, what are the barriers we should uh, work on in the next month, for example, for fostering these collaborations? Would like to answer this question. Yeah, I think I see you smiling. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to, to try and uh, unmute myself. Um, things that are going through my mind at the moment in, in, in that respect are, um, I mean, I think the, the, the people here today are all, all from strong centers, they, they they are strong locally, and uh, collaboration is is relatively easy. It's it's never totally easy because, as Enrico says, we're in a competitive environment, so we have to put together a strong bids. But I th again, I, I would come back to making the best use of the network that that we've built. You know, I think that the there are some smaller centers who would probably have a lot to contribute and and the YSBC network uh, actually gives us the 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 opportunity to do that to involve people from uh, different disciplines backgrounds geographies uh, etc i think a key challenge at the moment is to try and deliver in, in terms of strategizing with respect to future collaboration is trying to deliver meetings that can take place in more of a a face-to-face -face environment this the severe project is actually trying to combat that um the current situation head on with you know the idea of of of, of uh, more and more remote working but nevertheless collaborating uh, at the same time so getting over that apparent uh, overcoming that apparent contradiction and, and so that's a great example of a project that's, that's attempting to to do that, but at the same time, I think we've had people come into the network um, and have been in the network for a reasonable amount of time now, but they have, we've never had a face-to-face -face meeting with them because it's, it's now nearly two years into the pandemic. And, and, and that, that includes actually whole swathes of the globe, in particular um, Africa, uh, in terms of the enthusiasm. I mean, obviously some members have come in from, from that continent uh, before the pandemic, but there also seems to have been a surge in uh, enthusiasm and participation there. And so we, 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 I think one of the key things is, is to, in terms of developing relationships, is to try and get to face-to-face -face meetings as, as soon as we can, uh, uh, you know, safety considerations, uh, obviously uh, having to, to be paramount. Uh, in that. And I think another thing is to think about what it all means for the future. So we the, the network has been in place now for just over 10 years. We need to think about capacity building so that the you know the, the, the academics of the future. Uh, and again um, programs like Erasmus Plus and uh, Severe being a brilliant example of that are able to, to to take that idea on board in terms of building capacity for the future uh, around the globe. So the, to me, these are the, the barriers that we need to overcome. But as I'm indicating, I think that we are doing a pretty good job of, of, of overcoming them. But I think we all think that we could, we could, uh, we could do better. Thank you, Cam. I think you are doing a lot already. So yes, great ideas for the future. Um, I don't know if uh, Teresa, you'd like to explain your um, 
vision of the barriers and maybe suggestions as well? Yes, um, on my opinion, my, my experience is that all the international collaboration uh, were uh, really positive and were very successful. Uh, but I think that um, in the in the international collaboration, we have different different challenges. As Camp say, it is necessary to to increase uh, the the network because usually we, we participate in the different programs, the same cities and the same teams, and maybe it is necessary to to attract. Other other cities in the in the UNUS um, related with the UNUS Center, and also I think that it is necessary to attract people with with different knowledge because usually my experience is um, people related with the economy are interested in this kind of projects, but uh, people like engineering or other uh, subjects. They don't. Um, we don't have the ability to attract to the projects, and maybe we need um, different kind of knowledge. For example, now if we want to develop a project about the COVID situation, maybe it is necessary an economist, but maybe it is necessary some some someone that is a specialist in in care situation or in care aspects. So I think that our challenge. Uh, or the barriers that we have to overcome is to attract new new partners and attract new knowledge and also of course attract new cultures because different cultures is uh, different problems this is my point of view so you mean uh, opening the, the network to, to other universities and uh, and disciplines mm -hmm. So your vision is what, 200 uh, YSBCs in uh, five years? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Thank you very much. Enrico, what's your vision of the barriers in the different projects that you've le uh, led? So what were the, the obstacles that you, you've been facing and how to overcome these obstacles? Well, I, I say uh, during project implementation uh, barrier, the biggest barriers are usually um, the operational capacity of some partners uh, because some universities might not have actually the staff doing the work. Uh, they might have some professors, but we all know professors have many things to do, you know, and uh, projects require time and effort. So sometimes uh, it happened that there was not so much presence uh, of other staff members, let's say, that universities. And this is also, I think, a problem in starting collaborations, actually, uh, because when UNICEF Center begins, if they don't have so much staff, actually, it's quite hard also for the lead professor of the UNICEF Center to actually start collaborations because they might have PhD students or they might have uh, students in general, but to win and take part to really competitive bids, you have to have very professional stuff. So sometimes what I see is this, this stuff is lacking uh, and this blocks uh, or makes collaboration quite difficult. So. Um, I, I don't have the, the, this, this solution for, for, for this, maybe from the side of more uh, of stronger unit centers, maybe we can try to cooperate and fill some of these gaps at the beginning. Uh, but yes, this is, I think, one of the biggest um, uh, factors uh, blocking collaboration. Uh, but also, I think sometimes, uh some centers might not see collaborations practically you know they just wait for someone to reach out but what happens is that since it's a very competitive environment uh if you already have relation with some unit centers you will tend to work on that collaboration because you already know that they're um good 
in working, you trust them and so on, so you might not reach to the new ones. So I, I, my advice to the new ones is also to be quite proactive and contact, let's say, the, the, the unit centers that have been around for more time, that they see more uh, interesting, and try to build collaboration with them because it might be easier in that case. Yes, so you highlight again, uh, as Cam did, uh, the, the importance of building strong relationship with uh, trust, based on trust. And, uh, and this takes time and requires probably, so as you said, Cam, I think face-to-face -face meetings. So that's, yeah. And uh, okay, so you propose uh, new centers to be proactive so as to create these relationships. Thank you very much. Uh, Anastasia, maybe you would like to say a few things on the, this question of barriers and uh, ideas. Yeah. On yes, uh, I think, um, uh, yeah, my colleagues already mentioned the main barriers, but uh, as for Montpellier Business School, the YSBC from uh, uh, Montpellier Business School, I would say the two main barriers would be uh, the diversity, which can be uh, good and also it can also be a limit. Uh, for instance, we have, we are all professors, so we have competitive tasks like publications, courses, uh, service to the school. So uh, indeed, this, uh, this is indeed a barrier to have the time, the available time resources for uh, collaborations. Um, and the second is uh, what uh, Enrico mentioned very well is the resources. Um, uh, so why Severe is so successful in my opinion is that we have uh, the, the leader who provides the resources, the administrative resources for the organization of the project, which uh, other uh, UNUS centers do not uh, have. For instance, we are a young one, a young YSBC, which was created in 2019. And of course, we don't have the same resources as uh, more uh, established uh, centers. Thank you very much, uh, Anastasia. I, I think we have yeah, 20, minute, 20 minutes left. Um, I don't know if there are questions from the, the audience already. I don't see many questions. Don't hesitate uh, to ask uh, questions on the chat if you have. Otherwise, we keep on uh, you know, discussing. Um, I think an important issue that has been uh, shortly raised is the financial question. So is there a way to, to raise money together so as to have also I don't know, bigger teams that will have also more time to develop this collaboration. So what, what's your vision on this question of uh, collaboration to, to raise uh, financing you know, and in order to scale up, uh, to develop research and also uh, teaching? I can at least kick, kick this off, this, this segment. I, I mean, we we are all based in 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 Europe, um, and we have fantastic resources that it, it, to be able to at least compete for, and and you know, Severe is the latest example of that. But that that, that our track record in this respect goes all the way back to uh, two thousand and thirteen with the the Ephesus project that Enrico and and. Uh, uh, well, not myself, but uh, other colleagues at Glasgow Caledonia were, uh, were were involved with. So, I think we've shown that it's possible to attract significant uh, amounts of, of resources for projects, but also for for capacity building. Um, and I think we have to try and then extend that. So, the reason for pointing out that we are all based in Europe is that that that, that there are competitions funded by uh, the, the, the European Commission that um, extend beyond the boundaries of, 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 of Europe. So, uh, you know, I think, for example, SEVERE does involve people from, from outside Europe, or at least is, is, is open to that. And certainly other projects we've been involved with in the past, largely under the, the label of social innovation, 
uh, as opposed to social business, but they have still nevertheless involved YSBCs uh, from uh, Southeast Asia, Latin America, uh, for example. So I think there are still tremendous uh, possibilities there in terms of uh, raising finance from, from the Commission, uh, future possibilities. Obviously, given the particular position that the UK has, the United Kingdom has put itself into vis-a-vis -vis relationships with the Commission, uh, these would be projects that would probably be better led out of France and Italy and uh, other, other countries uh, and, uh, in which we would uh, participate. Equally, I think as well, we, we need to perhaps think about some foundations, Benny, that, that, that we could go to that have a more of an interest in research and research capacity building around the, around the globe. Um, and I mean, a lot of the time, a lot of foundations are more interested in the action side of things and actually doing stuff, which is completely understandable. So we don't want to end up competing with ourselves and competing with uh, other, other people that are trying to attract money or resources for social business itself. But nevertheless, if we could uh, pinpoint two or three international foundations that would be more interested in this kind of thing, then uh, we, could, we could think about them uh, as well as just the, uh, the European Commission. Thank you, Cam. So should we create a group on, on that uh, question, <laughs> financing? I, th I think we could. I, I, I mean, I'd probably leave it more to Enrico to, Enrico, to, pick, up on, to, to pick up on this, but the, one of the key things we need to be able to do that is information. So we need, we need information on the readiness and willingness of other YSBCs to, mm. uh, to collaborate. So th this, is, this comes back to this idea of a survey that we sent round uh, a month or two ago to, to YSBCs to, to complete. And uh, that information, I think, would be really important in placing us uh, in a position of readiness to apply for particular um, competitions. And what I would really urge people to do is to complete the survey, but also don't be too reluctant to complete it if you think, oh, we, I'm too small or we are not advanced enough. It's precisely to get that kind of information uh, that, that would help us involve, because lots of competitions want a, a, a range of people involved that are at different stages of development. Um, and that's precisely what they want to fund, which is, is to accelerate that development among certain um, members of the group based on the experience of, 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 of the more experienced members of the group. So we, we really uh, would urge people to complete that survey. And I, th I think Enrico will probably, uh, and, and maybe Lamia would, would, would uh, know as well, we'll probably reissue that survey after this particular session. Thank you, Cam. Maybe Enrico, you want to say a few words, and then I uh, leave the floor to the questions. If there are questions, questions arriving. Yes, I will just. I mean, uh, Cam actually uh, said almost everything. So uh, on my side, I will just add that it's quite important at this very moment, since we are many unit centers. You know, uh, most of us here met in person, uh, knew each other. Had, had the opportunity to build relations over many years, okay? So, but now we are almost 100 unit centers. So we really need to kind of systematize also the information and uh, find it easily. So the questionnaire uh, that we will reissue soon uh, has the double intent of understanding at what point, what are the capabilities of the different unit centers in taking part the projects. On the other side, it's also the first step to know each other because then we will publish, of course, these results. They won't be results that we keep for ourselves. You know, it's something that will be for all unit centers where you can put which are your research interests, your uh, capacities, and so on. So if we want to cooperate, we have to do some small efforts 
to cooperate. Otherwise, cooperation will not happen, you know, uh, randomly. Uh, sometimes it does, but it's very uh, difficult. Um, so I, I hope that other human centers will uh, fill the questionnaire because it's quite important if we want to go forward further with corporations. Thank you, Enrico. So I see in the chat that there, there are some, uh, you know, social business uh, entrepreneurs who are joining. So Adetola uh, from Nigeria. Thank you for writing and sharing your experience and Iman also from uh, Palestine. Um, and there are also que so questions arriving, uh, for example, from uh, Arthur. What's, what was the best and worst experience for you in co cooperating? Uh, so let's answer this. Uh, and then, yes, there is a question uh, related to the link to the survey. I think uh, Zinat, maybe by the end of the session, you will send us uh, the link. Yes, it is here. Sorry. Enrico sent it to, to us. Um, so yes, what's the best and the worst experience for you? Shortly, maybe, because there are lots of questions arriving now. Lots, a few. There are only good experiences, maybe. No, my, I have always a good experience. I don't have a bad experience in the international collaboration. The, bad, the, the results at the end, it, it were very positive, very, very. Thank you, Teresa. Maybe I can add something. Um, me too. I, I really enjoy uh, the collaborations with the other centers, but maybe one <laughs> not so good experience, I would say it was, uh, it happened to our students who had to travel to the Dublin City University uh, within the severe project uh, this uh, September. And unfortunately, most of them could not get a visa because they were from North Africa. So Maybe, um, and this is linked to what Cam was saying concerning the face-to-face -face meetings, which are so important. So indeed, face-to-face -face meetings are important, but it's sometimes difficult to facilitate them. So we had, I think, four or five students who did not get their visa to go to, to Dublin to, to, to the summer school, yeah. Thank you. Anastasia, uh, Cam or Enrico, you want to answer? Or otherwise we, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, it's quite strange. I had uh, very bad experiences, but not with UNOS centers. So uh, I have only positive experiences with UNOS centers. So kind of, I don't know if it's statistically relevant, but actually, it's quite strange, I would say. But I think it's also an example, if you choose your partner as well, actually, you have you can have very good experiences. And I think also being in a network and knowing each other and seeing each other every year, it eases a lot also uh, pro project implementation. And also if there are disagreements, you always solve them in a very uh, civilized way, uh, which sometimes doesn't happen in other projects with other people. So um, I think actually it's, we should grasp this opportunity that we are having with the Unicentered Centered Network. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with everything that everyone said. And we shouldn't forget as well that, I mean, whether you'd call it bad experiences, I mean, they, 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 might, they might arise in terms of, the, the only bad experiences really would be when it's about relationships between people. Uh, and I, I think it's a matter of trying to build in processes within projects to try and resolve those. But apart from that, I think uh, we might, label something as a bad experience which is really just we need to let you know learn from failure or learn from what might have been a lack of sort of mutual uh, understanding in the first place i mean I, I see in the chat someone talking about uh different struggles that people have, have, have had with with projects and i think that we 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 uh, we need to try and build in sort of some consideration of that in in the first place in terms of the relative expectations of different uh, project partners. But if we're learning about that as we go along as well, then again, that comes back down to good relationships uh, between the group 
and, and managing those relationships in a way that, that, that help us either overcome those particular struggles or they set another perhaps agenda for uh, a different project in the future that we can uh, that, that we can set aside for now and, and, and move on. And also, I think with a lot of projects, a lot of funders are, are kind of understanding of those kind of struggles as well. So although what we've written down on paper uh, for the or electronically for the uh, for the funder uh, is what we would like to to achieve in the project, um, sometimes that 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 doesn't happen, and uh, in in a sense, a, a project bid is a is a statement of intent. Um, it's not necessarily something that we must uh, satisfy, and in fact, in a lot of cases, we'll go beyond what, uh, that statement of intent as well. And I, I would I would contend that there are more cases of the latter than there are of, of the former. But a lot of it is about this mutual understanding, and uh, I think. Part of that, as Enrico says, is getting the right teams together in the first place. Thank you, uh, Cam. So yesterday, yes, there was a question from Natalia that you asked twice. So what do you think? When do teams whose members live in different countries, cultures perform better? And when do they struggle? So is this a question for uh for the this network and uh for this YSBC or is it something related to, to uh social businesses in general or, organ or organizations in general so your question is not fully clear to me but maybe uh, some of the speakers would like to answer well I, I think just building on what I've just said I think that is partly yeah. a general problem but the but we but I would I would go back to being really positive about the YSBC network and the fact that we the we've we've built a tremendous network that I think allows uh, much of this kind of mutual and cultural understanding to have kind of to to take place in advance of actually then going ahead with with bids. So I think we would um, I think if we're communicating through the network already, we should have a pretty good idea of what to expect of different partners uh, in in such a bid. Um, so I, you know, I I I I I would just go back to saying we've we've built a really good network for being able to try and deal with these types of challenge that that, that the question the person asking the question has quite rightly uh, raised. Thank you very much. Um, yes, there is a question from Philip um, about the three zero clubs. So, how do you see or plan your contribution on three zero clubs? Do you feel your students willing to get engaged on that topic? So, maybe Anastasia, you have some answer. Yes, it's, it relates to your previous question, Benedict. Right. So, I think indeed. Um, uh, the next step, so Sevier is now focused on these six uh, academic institutions. Uh, the, the idea is that indeed, if we can uh, open it internationally, it would be great. But uh, I think what's interesting is to have indeed uh, some academic institutions behind which lead the project and structure the project. So uh, I think indeed we can scale up uh, the Sevier from European, six European institutions to the um international institutions so i think that's uh, that's a great idea and uh, we uh, I, it's something we need to uh, totally discuss within the the network of the six academic institutions so uh, we will keep this idea in mind philip and uh, we'll see how we can uh, develop it further but uh, yes i think it's a great uh, it would be great if we can uh, do something like that uh, maybe another thing that we could try to develop together is um um, a network of social businesses, uh, like a data set of social businesses where students can do their internships there uh, and uh, if possible internship, internships online uh, because with the COVID situation is indeed something that it's interesting to develop and also for students to be sensibilized and to find easier the uh, different projects which they can work for. Thank you very much. Uh, Lamia, you had a question? Uh, how this how did this particular constellation of universities 
uh, come together to collaborate. Can, maybe can you ask your question directly and explain us what you mean? Are you here? Yeah, sorry. I, the question was that how did this, this particular group come together? If you've covered that already, I'm, I'm sorry, but I seem to have missed it because it's an interesting uh, group of YSBCs and a couple of non-YSBCs as well. I was just wondering about that. So you mean for the Severe Project program? Yes, that's right. Yeah, who would like to answer? I can answer. Okay, yeah. So I can start the answer and then my colleagues can go on. So um, uh, I think most of the um, uh, universities, they had the, this traditional or habit to work together. But what concerns Montpellier Business School is the fact that we have previously had some collaborations uh, on finance with colleagues from the UNU Center from the Glasgow Caledonian University. So it's because we had already previous connections on uh, similar topics of interest that they thought, oh, yes, maybe we can contact Montelier Business School because they also work on microfinance. They're interested in this topic. So I would say it was research oriented at the beginning. And then uh, this is how the link was. So thank you so much. I, I see some other questions arriving. I'm afraid we are done now uh, and we have to conclude. Uh, if you have more questions, maybe we can write the questions and uh, I know if Zinat, you can list all the questions that have not been answered and then we can uh, answer by mail. Um, so I think, yes, I, I want to thank very much the, our guest speakers and, uh, and thank also all the initiatives that you've been uh, uh, developing to create all these collaborations. Uh, you're doing a great job. You've been, you've been doing a great job for many years. And uh, we need you in this, uh, you know, UNUS uh, network. Uh, I think we all need to, to meet again face to face, as you've said. Uh, it's not maybe it's maybe not so good for climate, but I think once a year, uh, with probably very precise topics, as you said, focus topics, uh, and also informal meetings would be necessary if. Uh, uh, the situation allows us to do it next year and uh, it will be very rich and uh, meet also the new centers that we maybe didn't have the chance to meet like African uh, centers would be really, really nice. And I think it's time to uh, hand over to Zinat, uh, who probably will tell us more about uh, the next um, meeting, Social Business Day, and also we encourage you again, you know, to answer the, the survey. So Zinat, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. A big round of applause to all our speaker and our moderator, moderator today. Uh, thank you very much. This has been a great, great conversation. Uh, you know, our newer YSBCs are always asking about, you know, how can they do activities and they want to connect to our senior YSBCs. And I think it's always um, good to have an experienced YSBC guide the newer YSBCs because it's uh, collaboration or you know same platform uh, being academic institutions so um, this has been a great conversation and I'm sure our YSBCs who are watching this uh, session uh, will be reaching out to you all I already had a professor from our YSBC in India reach out about um, you know collaborating on research um, programs and I mentioned about watching this session today so I'm sure she's watching this and maybe will be reaching out to you all so um, this um, has been a great platform, I think, um, uh, you know, to be able to bring all of you to our lecture session. And uh, as everyone mentioned here, uh, we shared the link of um, the survey to fill out. Even if you're not a part of our YSBC network, YSBC meaning the UNO Social Business Center Network, which are universities, uh, you know, focusing on social business, having social business courses, doing workshops, competition, etc. You're always welcome to join our network of uh, YSBCs 
Alliance, which is 98 strong now. Um, if you have any interest in establishing a YSBC, please send an email to uh, YSBC at unicenter.org. And you know, then you'll be able to have access to all these uh, YSBCs of which um, our speakers and moderator are uh, today. So uh, thank you very, very much for uh, watching this session today and of course to our moderator and speaker for giving your time and effort and making this possible so we really appreciate it and i'm sure we will have will be we will be having you all in our future events um one of which is our social business day our social business day is our annual program um it's going to be on june 26 to june 30 we will we hope to have some live events uh, depending on the situation of the pandemic but of course we'll have our virtual sessions uh, so i welcome everyone of you to um join those uh, sessions you will be getting invitations um to speak, um, you know, to join workshops, our country forums, the academia forums. And, um, you know, if you have any ideas of how we can make it different, more exciting, if you want to bring in your students, other other people in your network, entrepreneurs, etc., please do let us know. Uh, so that is our social business day, which is coming up. Uh, we will be seeing slides on it. Um, but of course, we'll have our lecture series as usual. This is our 31st lecture. There are more lecture sessions coming up. So up in the slides, you will see information on those. So till then, thank you very much. And I request the IT team to play our other slides. at the next